Okay, well, um, I'll get going now. Um, this artist talk is part of the event series with the Lacuna Festivals, um, so I should start by thanking them very much for having my artwork in the festival. Um, and it's online, uh, displayed online, so if anyone hasn't had a chance to see it, I recommend logging into their virtual gallery. Uh, they've done a really amazing job of displaying everyone's artwork. Um, so yeah, you can find the link to the full festival uh, on my website, the link to which is in the bio on my uh, on my Instagram. Um, there's yeah, they've also written a really good uh, artist statement to go with. So I highly recommend having a look at that if you haven't already. Um, to introduce myself to anyone that doesn't already know me and my practice, I'm Clara Langezekiel. Um, I'm the author of the Life series that's in the show, uh, which is the one I'll be talking about today. Um, my practice is anchored in uh, my history training. I did my undergraduate degree uh, both in fine art but also in history, um, and I've kept that as the main inspiration for what I do now. Um, Basically, I chose to leave the field of history because uh, it's a field that requires uh, objectivity, which um, is in and of itself kind of a paradox, given that the practice of history involves questioning everyone's bias and where everyone's coming from, and then writing as if we don't have the same biases and lack of objectivity. Um, so that bothered me and caused me to keep history as an inspiration, but not um, as what I do. Um, so the way I use history in my practice is to uh, do the research uh, in something that I'm interested in and try to use my artistic voice, my artistic practice to give a voice and a platform to voices that have been historically uh, left to the footnotes of history. So that generally includes women, people of color, um, religious minorities, and really uh, any minority uh, as anyone that's open to history book knows um, until, you know, what, like the 1900s, it was all white men, right? So this specific piece that I'm talking about, Life Magazine, I appropriated the iconic American uh, Life Magazine, which had an incredible audience in its day and a, a huge influence on popular opinion in America and therefore abroad, because we know that America has, uh, as one of its main exports, its culture. Um, so Life magazine, uh, I'll show a couple examples. You may tell me if you spot the difference. Um, we've got covers like this uh, of the men in action. This one is from 1944. Uh, so Eisenhower looking all professional in his office uh, with his name on the cover. That's important. Um, then we have the women. No name, no clue who she is. This is also during the war, so it's got nothing to do with not having news to report. It's just women, if you can see in the little corner, uh, it just says half hat. So we've got a lot of anonymous uh, models on the covers of Life magazine and um, powerful men that are named on the cover. Uh, for that reason, uh, the series I created, I chose to use a question that historians are not usually allowed to use, which is the what if question. Um, history and historians are supposed to stick to the facts, what did happen and not what could have happened. Um, but as an artist, I'm not restricted to, uh, to that process. So uh, using that approach, if you want to be more familiar with counterfactual history, one of the easiest ways to explain it is to use pop culture. You may have seen some Tarantino movies or the recent uh, Hollywood, which is a Netflix series that recently came out um, where they take factual history and then throw in an element that's invented and follow through to see how this invented aspect would change the course of history. Um, it's a really fun, creative way to explore uh, the way our society is built and the way our history is built and written. Um, so using this approach, I started creating a whole series of fictitious covers of Life magazine, putting on the cover uh, women that really did exist and women that really did extraordinary things. Um, things that could have easily landed them uh, on the cover of Life magazine, but through my research I've discovered one of the reasons they weren't, in addition to society being explicitly sexist and racist at the time, not that it isn't today, um, 
I discovered that not only that, but the editor-in-chief of Life magazine, John Shaw Billings, was notoriously sexist. Uh, he's quoted saying things like, I dislike women writers, or uh, talking about his female employees by their physical attributes instead of any, you know, relevant things such as their names, for instance. So we really not surprisingly have just a whole um, series of covers that do not treat women uh, the way they treat men. Um, so in response to that, it's, it's a wider series, but I will show you the three that I've included uh, in the Lacuna Festival show, which are the ones I'll be um, talking about more today. Uh, for that, let's see, let me switch my camera over for you. All right, so um, these are the three that you will see in the show. Uh, as you can see, they're a little bit smaller than they appear in the virtual gallery, but I'm not complaining about that display as it looks really good. Um, this is the first one I created for the series. Uh, I think it's a very good one to start with uh, because it mimics a lot of the physical representation of the men in Life magazine. Um, these two women are Ludmila Pavlichenko and Rosa Shanina. They are two uh, Soviet snipers that were active during World War II. Uh, Ludmila Pavlichenko, the one on the right, um, was one, is still today actually, one of the most successful and deadly snipers um, in, in military history. Um, so there's really no reason that we, you know, anyone that's interested in the military side of World War II shouldn't be familiar with her, and yet she is, as I said earlier, kind of a footnote of history. Um, so I chose to start with this cover because I thought it was a very good copy, or not copy, a uh, very good parallel, I should say, to uh, the men that were on the covers of Life magazine, all of the military uh, representations, all the soldiers that the pages of Life magazine are filled with. Interestingly enough, Life is the first magazine to ever show a picture of an American casualty during World War II, um, so it seemed apparently less shocking to them to portray dead soldiers than it was to portray women soldiers. Telling. And so that is the first one. The second one still to do with the representation of women who participated in the military effort of World War II. Um, this is Elizabeth Gardner. She was an aviator during World War II. Um, her parallel to the life covers was more to replace some of the, um, the more anonymous men they put on the covers. So they often used pictures of soldiers that they may be named in the pages but not on the cover that were meant to stand for a whole unit uh, or a whole branch of the military. So I thought, you know, let's, let's explore what, um, what the American imagination of their military might be had a woman been the face of one of the uh, military branches such as aviation. So we've got Elizabeth Gardner here standing for that. And the third portrait um, which some of you will probably recognize more than the others, is Hattie McDaniel. I was honestly somewhat shocked to find out that she wasn't actually ever pictured on the cover of Life magazine. Uh, they don't seem to have even addressed the event uh, I'm referencing here, which is her 1940s historic win of an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress in Gone with the Wind. She's the first African-American actress to ever win an Oscar. Um, and it took till Halle Berry for uh, an African-American woman to win Best Actress. So that's a pretty big, um, pretty big gap in time before the next big step was, was made. Um, I can't really mention this piece without referencing what's going on today with the removal of Gone with the Wind, which I know has been uh, very controversial. So I just thought it would be a good opportunity to mention that while that movie is absolutely part of history for reasons, you know, more than just uh, Hattie McDaniel's win, however, um, it's really important to remember that she was then typecast as the Mammy for pretty much the rest of her career, and that even her peers um, at the time criticized her um, for taking those roles as they perpetuated negative stereotypes of the African-American community. So I think that's a part of her story and a part of the Gone with the Wind story that is being left out a lot of the current debate, um, regardless of, of what your uh, position on, on the matter is. Um, I'll kind of back up. I don't know. Oh, there we go. We can see them all. At the bottom is... Uh, 
Simone de Beauvoir's uh, print as well that wasn't included in the show. There are more of these um, that you're welcome to see. They are all on my, um, they're all on my Instagram, so you're more than welcome to see the rest of the series. Um, I will switch back so I can take some questions in just a second. Um, but before I do that, I do want to take a second to just mention um, my current work, as you may have noticed due to my mention to the um, Gone with the Wind controversy. I'm doing a lot of work to do with Black Lives Matter at the moment. Um, and uh, if you're interested in following that, all of the prints I'm working on at the moment are actually available for free download. And I encourage you not only to download them and use them, but to take them to protests and make your voice heard. Um, I uh, am doing this talk on online due to COVID, but it would be uh, remiss of me to not mention the Black Lives Matter movement, which is the uh, other major event going on today. So I do encourage you to take part in that. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to respond to them now. Um, I also have a very long statement I wrote um, about this series. So if you'd rather read about it, feel free to contact me and I can send you that. Uh, it is the equivalent of my master's thesis. So it's a little bit longer than a normal artist statement. Um, yeah. Hi, cousin. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's um, that's kind of the quick version of the Life series, which is a, a much longer series that I spent about a year working on. So there we go. Um, and for anyone that missed the beginning, this is a talk that's to do with the Lacuna Festivals uh, series that have um, uploaded all the artwork online. Um, and so you're welcome to, through my website, you can get the link to the virtual gallery with the absolutely amazing job they've put of, uh, they've done of putting all the artwork online. So there we go. That's me. Um, if I end this before anyone comes up with questions, you're obviously welcome to message me directly. I'm always happy to talk about my work. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, lots of love to all of you. Bye.